Hey guys, today for your viewing pleasure, I bring you something that I got for Christmas that I think is pretty cool. This is a General Electric Model 3-5979 handheld CB radio, and this was made in 1995, so it has a few years under its belt. But uh, this radio is in fact brand new. I got it brand new in the box for Christmas. There is someone on eBay that uh, has a few of these brand new in the box, new old stock that you can get for 40 bucks each and I think 65 bucks a pair. So first of all, what is CB radio? Now I'm sure most of you, if not all of you, have a basic understanding of what a CB radio is and what CB radio itself is, but uh, I'll give a brief explanation. Uh, the Citizens Band radio service was begun in the 1940s by the FCC in the United States but it was on a different band and stuff and then uh, it was in 1958 that the current CB radio band uh, was initiated. Uh, the Citizens Band radio service was basically the first widespread low power two-way radio communication band for use by people like you and me. Um, it was originally uh, 23 channels and then in 1977 the US expanded it to 40 channels and then other countries picked it up shortly afterwards. All CB radio transceivers are limited to 4 watts of transmit power and there were basically three types of CB radios. You had your base radios which were big radios that usually plugged into 120 volts and were meant to sit on a desk and they'd be connected to a huge antenna outside or on top of your roof or whatever. You had your mobile CB radios that would be installed in a vehicle and then it would be connected to an antenna on the roof. And then you'd have your handheld units like this which have a built-in antenna. Some of them have a rubber duck antenna and then others like this one have a telescoping antenna that pulls out. Well, uh, during the 1970s, CB radio was incredibly popular, um, especially by truckers, and in a lot of media from the 1970s, you often see CB radios uh, used. Um, if you've ever heard C.W. McCall's song Convoy, or the newer version of the song, which I forget who it was by, um, but that has a lot of CB radio stuff in it. The film Smokey and the Bandit, that has CB radios in it. CB radios were popular for several reasons. They were, of course, a great way to uh, talk to people from a distance away, be it your neighbor, or uh, if you're on the highway and you want to speak to a trucker, or, or uh, if you were traveling with family or friends in another car, you could keep in contact with each other. And back in the day it was a great way to get information on weather and road conditions if you were on the road uh, you could flip over to channel 19 that was the uh, tr uh, official truckers channel I guess and it, I guess it still is and you could call out and ask for any weather conditions or any road conditions and a trucker perhaps as far as 10 miles away would respond and could alert you to stuff, maybe perhaps there was a cop waiting on the side of the road down the road with a speed radar and then you'd make sure not to speed but uh, definitely it, it wasn't definitely all orthodox uh, uses for the CB radio but uh, today it does prove interesting to learn about. CB radios were also um, advertised and sold for their emergency value now, I'm not sure if even back in the 70s, CB radios were quite useful for emergency purposes. But, uh, Channel 9, as you can see, is marked on this radio. That's the official emergency channel. And if, if you say, if you were out in the snow and you got your car stuck or something, you could flip over to Channel 9 and call for help. And then hopefully someone would hear you. And if they, say, had a car phone back in the day, they could uh, call emergency services. Or if someone with a, a truck and a CB radio heard you, they could come and haul you out and uh, stuff like that. And uh, 
companies such as General Electric and Radio Shack, they manufactured CB radios uh, that were meant primarily for emergency services. They were like handheld units like this, but they did not take batteries. They plugged into the cigarette lighter and they had an antenna that you'd put on the roof. And their primary purpose was for emergency calling. Well, beginning in the 1980s, um, as cellular phones began to uh, become cheaper to own and use, and newer, more modern radio services, such as the General Mobile Radio Service and the Family Radio Service, began to rise in popularity. The use of CB radios began to decline. And today, it's probably safe to say that there is hardly anyone that uses a CB radio anymore. Nowadays, you might come across the odd trucker with a CB radio, or the odd uh, person owed uh, four-wheeling in their truck or Jeep or whatever. But uh, other than that, there really is no one that uh, uses a CB radio for practical use anymore because cell phones have become so cheap to own and operate. I even have a cell phone now. And really, sadly, most people you hear on the CB radio now are people down in the United States, usually the southern states, running amplifiers that raise their legal 4 watt uh, output power to hundreds or even thousands of watts. And all they do is pretty much ramble on saying random crap and try to cause trouble. But of course, it's not all that bad that CB radio is nowhere near uh, as popular as it used to be now, because nowadays if you happen to uh, be on the radio and you come across someone else on the radio, you and him can have a relatively decent conversation because there probably isn't going to be anyone else that will take the channel and interrupt you. As for me, uh, pretty much all my entire life I've had an interest in two-way radio communications. Um, when I was a kid I always wanted a set of walkie-talkies, a set of GMRS walkie-talkies. And uh, when I was little I remember I had um, a toy radio set that had a base station and two handheld radios and they probably actually were CB radios, they probably actually operated on the CB band but they were single channel, they probably had like a tenth of a watt of power but uh, they did serve their purpose, they were pretty cool but I remember perhaps a year or two later um, I don't know what happened if uh, I, if we just gave the set away or what, but uh, then when I was, I think, 12 or 13, I got my first set of real walkie-talkies. Um, I still have them today, a pair of Cobra um, GMRS radios, um, and I thought they were pretty cool, but I never really saw much use for them, unfortunately, but I still do have them. They're still in great shape, and I'll make a video of them someday, and probably I'll sell them. But, a couple of years ago, I gained an interest in CB radio, and I had no clue if uh, anyone around here used it, but I thought, what the heck, I'll get a radio and, and see what I can get. And that's when I bought my first CB radio. This isn't the only one I own, I own one other radio. It's a mobile radio that I'll make a video of someday in the near future. And I got that, and I got a cheap antenna to go with it, and I have yet to ever talk to anybody. Um, I hear a lot of people down in the United States running those huge amplifiers, saying a bunch of nonsensical bullcrap on uh, Channel 6. That's the official channel for people with huge amplifiers to say nonsensical bullcrap, also known as skip. Um... But there are some people who run amplifiers and actually uh, make worthwhile use of them. They actually contact people from uh, right across the country or right across the continent. And uh, it's pretty great because you can talk to people from so far away and learn about different cultures and stuff. Uh, that's pretty great when you use a CB radio with an amplifier for something other than yelling breaker, breaker, breaker and saying a bunch of crap and swearing. But I got a mobile unit and it's a fine and dandy unit and I've heard a lot of big talkers down in the states um, but originally I wanted a handheld radio and I didn't get one 
at that time, um, there were no cheap handheld radios on eBay. Um, at that time, I was only buying on the Canadian eBay because we weren't set up to have stuff from eBay shipped to the U.S. where we could go pick it up. And for some reason, people in the U.S. just overcharged like nuts to ship things to Canada. So I had to keep a really tight budget, and that mobile radio uh, was what I happened to get, and it was a fine and dandy radio. But uh, I still wanted a handheld unit, so a few months ago, I started researching um, handheld units, and what I found was that today, when you uh, research handheld CB radios, you'll come across two units. The General Electric 3-5980, the model that replaced this model, the 5979, and the other radio you'll come across is the Midland 75-785. And I read reviews for these two radios and greatly um, considered getting the Midland, but what just put me off was all the reviews from people saying how awful the range on these handheld CB radios are. For those two particular radios, people wrote reviews stating that they couldn't transmit any farther than like a tenth of a mile. Well, that's pretty awful range right there. And if you ask people on CB radio forums how handheld CB radios perform, they'll tell you pretty much the same thing, that they're absolutely awful. But then I did some more research and looked more in depth into this, and I discovered something. What those two radios, the GE 5980 and the Midland unit, have in common is that they have rubber duck antennas. And here's the thing, rubber duck antennas are absolutely horrible. They're horrible for all sorts of radios, but they're especially horrible for CB radios because CB radios operate on a relatively low frequency between 26 and 28 megahertz. Basically, there, there's a lot of science that goes into antennas, especially antennas for CB radios, but basically the longer the antenna, the better. And I discovered that there were handheld radios that had very long antennas, and this is one of them, and that those radios perform so much better than CB radios with rubber duck antennas. So, that pretty much decided me I was going to get a handheld CB radio with a telescoping antenna, and basically my decision came down to this, or a radio by Radio Shack, and I ultimately decided on this. Even though um, I really had no reviews to go by on this, and there's only one other video of one of these on YouTube, and it's not really a review or anything, it's just a demonstration of the radio receiving skip from the big talkers. And by the way, I never knew this until recently, apparently handheld CB radios um, have longer range than those handheld um, GMRS walkie-talkies, um, which I had no clue about. You look on a package of walkie-talkies, and they'll say that it gets like, 14 mile range, well, that's absolutely nonsense. Um, I don't know if that would even be possible in outer space with a pair of those radios. But uh, apparently, um, for the most part, handheld CB radios, that is full power ones, like this one that has four watts of power, they get longer range than those walkie-talkies that you can go to Walmart and buy. So, enough rambling on, let's take a look at this radio. Now, first of all, we'll take a look at its box. This is the box it comes in. Full professional performance in a convenient handheld size. 4 watts output power at 13.8 volts DC. Output power does vary with voltage. 40 channel phased lock loop circuit. Adjustable range control, that means squelch. Um, although I suppose I could also mean uh, the transmit power level, which is adjustable on this radio and a one-year warranty, which, I don't know, probably expired in 1996, I'm guessing. And has the radio there, and it's branded as the Search 40, which, I'm not going to lie, I think that's a pretty cool name for a CB radio. There's the top of the box. Uh, 
And there's what looks like a stereotypical image of a guy you'd find around here with the tartan jacket and the matching tartan hat. You can see the radio there with just a small part of the antenna. Three position power saver switch for long battery life. LED display for battery check and channel display. Durable resilient grill and push to talk bar. Adjustable hand strap, LED transmit indicator. Sentry 50 ohm telescoping whip antenna, 57 inches long. The longest rubber ducky antenna you'll find on a CB radio is probably like 6 inches. 12 volt DC operating voltage, top mounted volume and range control, again that means squelch. Side mounted transmit bar for one hand operation. And we have an external antenna jack, 12 volt DC power. And you can operate it from a cigarette lighter or 8 AA batteries. And of course, like most of GE's consumer electronics, this was manufactured by Thompson, which I believe is a division of RCA. I'm not sure though. Made in Malaysia. Sentry is an actual line of GE antennas. Back in the day, that is. GE doesn't make any uh, CB stuff anymore, I don't think. But uh, they had mobile antennas branded as Sentry. Their antennas that came with their emergency radios were branded as Sentry. And apparently this thing has a Sentry antenna. And it is a replaceable antenna. If it breaks, um, it, it's not screwed into a standard jack or anything. You, so you have to replace it with an antenna of the same type, but uh, it is replaceable nonetheless, which is great. Date code 5527M, that means the 27th week of 1995. And this particular model is the 3-5979C. There is a 3-5979A, and it does differ considerably, even though it looks the exact same. I'll explain that later. There's the LED display, apparently actual size. In the box, you get a plethora of documentation. If you get one of these new in the box. You get an advertisement to... Uh, Buy a carry case for the radio, $3.95, black vinyl with the look of leather. Well, there's the whole thing if you want to read it. Here's the product registration card, and for some reason, the date code, instead of 5527, it says 6527. Although that still means the same thing, it's the 27th week of 1995. The first number in GE's uh, date codes mean absolutely nothing. The second number is the last digit of the year, and the last two numbers are the week. But I guess this was for uh, for warranty and stuff. So there's that. And then you have the manual, which is in two different languages, and you need two hands to read it. But uh, it just goes through the basic features, very basic troubleshooting. Yeah, it's only one, two, it's three pages. So there's that. And now on to the radio itself. Um, I really love the look of this thing. Up here you have the speaker, and then all your controls and, and the display and stuff are in the middle. Usually with most handheld CBs, it's the other way around. You got your speaker down here, and then your display and everything up here. So uh, I like how the speaker is mounted at it at the radio's highest point. So at the top here you have your volume which is also your power switch and you have your squelch which is labeled range and then this wonderful antenna which is also branded as search 40 and GE Sentry. I'll pull it out for you off camera because it takes two hands and then I'll show it to you. Here's the antenna And there's the end of it. Very long antenna. Antennas, I never knew, are probably the most important part of any CB radio. Um, apparently, the antenna makes more difference in transmit range than the actual transmit power. I guess rubber ducks do have their merits. If you uh, need to use the radio in a place 
where it's not convenient to extend a huge antenna but uh, they're usually about that long. So by the way these knobs are rubberized which I didn't expect at all. The radio itself is plastic but these knobs have uh, rubber. They're finished in rubber and even the speaker grill is rubber so that's really great. And on the left side of the speaker grill you have your push to talk button and that's rubber of course. You have your transmit indicator which I thought looked pretty cool because before I tried out this radio I assumed that the whole thing lights up when you hit the transmit button but actually there's a tiny little LED on the very left of it that lights up but oh well who cares. You got your LED channel display you have a button used to light up the display you have your transmit power selector you have your channel knob you have your microphone right here and then you take this black cover off to access the battery compartment on the right side of the unit you have your external antenna jack your 12 volt DC input so you don't have to use batteries and then that's the button to open this cap to get to the battery compartment and then on the back we have what looks like a clip for some short sort of uh, accessory that would have uh, hooked this to something. You have this nice adjustable hand strap to help you hold the radio in case you drop it. And then on the writing here it says made in Malaysia. Um, there's a screw that you unscrew to take out the antenna. You've got a warning on here about uh, installing batteries which is starting to rub off. rubs off very easy. It's just on a plastic sticker. And then on the very bottom here, Citizens Band Transceiver Model 59, 3-5979C, Thompson Consumer Electronics. There's the date code again, serial number, made in Malaysia. Now this radio has a lot of really interesting design traits besides the placement of the controls in the speaker that really set it apart from other radios. First of all, how other uh, handheld CB radios usually work is that the LED display lights up uh, when uh, you receive a transmission and it also lights up when you change channels but then it uh, goes out and if you want to light it up again for a few seconds you press a button and uh, it'll light up again for a few seconds. This thing by default does not light the, C the LED display at all. Um, you could use the radio without ever having the LED display light up. It only lights up when you uh, press and hold the channel display button, which I think is very interesting. But uh, I can see why they uh, made it this way because of another interesting design trait that I actually really love. Most handheld CB radios have an electronic control. You have channel up and down buttons that you use to change the channel. This thing has a mechanical knob that you use to change the channel. And of course, as you've already seen, the channels are laid out right here. So if you have good eyesight, you can change the channel and everything without ever lighting up the display. But uh, if you want to double check that you're, say, on channel 8, you can hold the button and it'll light up and let you know. But I really love this because you can go to different channels really quickly instead of having to press channel up a bunch of times. Just whip the knob right around and uh, I think it's really great. And uh, of course, without theoretically ever having to use the LED display, that really saves battery life. And also, another interesting design trait is that the transmit power has three settings. Most radios, in fact, every radio I've ever seen besides this one, has just high or low. Well, this has high, medium, and low. And having three power level settings is probably more of a frig than it is useful, but I think it's cool nonetheless. And then as for the antenna jack, it appears to be an RCA style jack like you'd find on composite or component video jacks. But uh, it seems that adapters to change this plug into a standard antenna plug are very widely available. And that's pretty much it. So I'll open up the battery compartment, which might or not, might not be a two-handed job. 
And I think it is, but what you do is you hold that button down and then pull this black piece off. There. And it's attached to the uh, strap here so you can't lose it. And then that's what it looks like. And then here are your eight AA batteries. Three here, three here, and two here. And I would imagine that perhaps, like, I know the Midland radio I mentioned earlier, that you can still buy new today, by the way, uses 10 AA batteries. That probably has more transmit power than this thing does with only 8 AA batteries, but who knows. And there's another warning here that says install batteries correctly, pretty much. So, we'll just push it back in. Now, what I notice that this radio doesn't have, that most radios do have, that I actually think is kind of important is that it has no low battery indicator which I think I'm just gonna come right out and say that GE probably should have put a low battery indicator on this because really your only indication of low batteries is that you press the channel display button and the display is dim or doesn't come up at all but when I first got this thing I tried used batteries in it and it turned on and the display lit up, but uh, when I tried to transmit, um, I went out on the doorstep and transmitted to my other CB radio in here, and I just, my signal didn't hardly go out at all. Um, even though the display still lit up, it was a little bit dim, but uh, yeah, so the display is not that great of a battery indication, because the batteries can be good enough for the display to light up but low enough that really transmitting on this is quite useless. But uh, that's all right. I bought uh, two sets of brand new batteries to uh, use in this thing. Perhaps someday I'll get rechargeables to use in it. So without further ado, uh, I'll pull the antenna out and we'll turn it on and see if we can receive anything. Okay, antenna's out. So we'll just carefully Aim this thing upwards. I'm lying down in bed now. We'll turn it on. And another thing I notice is that even with new batteries, um, like another indication of low batteries is that no sound comes out. Even the hissing sound like this. When the batteries are low, you won't even hear that. But I have found that even um, on batteries, the hissing sound is not as loud as it is on a 12 volt uh, adapter, be it a cigarette lighter adapter or an AC adapter, I've tried both on this. So uh, definitely, if possible, use a cigarette lighter or an AC adapter because um, it definitely gives this thing more power in both transmit and receive than the batteries will. But nonetheless, it seems to work fine on batteries. Now I'll show you the display. There it is, we're on channel 6 right now, that's the official skip channel. But there doesn't appear to be anything on right now, but uh, I'll scan through the band and see if we get anything. Alright, let's scan through the band here. I wouldn't say there's anyone on the band at the moment. Last year, I was getting tons of skip on my other CB radio, but uh, it seems on both of these radios, I'm hardly getting any skip at all these days, so um, I believe last year was a good year for skip because of atmospheric conditions, but I guess now we're on the uh, downslope and it's not going to be as good in the years to come. Now I'll uh, show you the transmit light, we'll put it down to low power, and what channel are we on? Good enough. And we press transmit, and an LED lights up there. <laughs> I would have thought the whole thing would light up, but uh, whatever. Now, the radio is turned on right now and receiving static. Notice how much louder it gets when I plug in a 12 volt adapter. 
So I don't know if this means that uh, the radio has much better ability receiving compared with an adapter compared to batteries. I don't know. Like I said, this thing has brand new batteries in it. So uh, I don't know, but uh, maybe it does. Now, I got my Uniden Bearcat 72XLT scanner programmed into the frequency for channel 25. And I have my Olympus LS7 recorder um, hooked up to the earphone jack. So uh, now you guys be, will be able to see what this thing sounds like. We're on channel 25, uh, low power, so let's see what it sounds like. Alright, this is a test of the General Electric Model 3-5979C handheld CB radio from 1995. So, as you might be able to hear, um, I don't think it sounds half bad. Like I said, uh, I don't have, I've never used another handheld CB radio to compare this thing to. And the only other CB radio I have is a very low end, a very cheap uh, radio. So uh, I don't really have anything decent to compare to. But as far as I'm concerned, I think the quality of this is pretty good. Now, as for what this thing sounds like, what I'll do is I'll hook up my other CB radio and transmit on it so you can hear me on this thing. I'm not identifying the other radio yet because I just want it to be a secret because I'll be making a video on it someday. But uh, all you really need to know is it's a really small, really cheap radio with its stock microphone that's also really small and really cheap. With that in mind, let's see what I sound like on this thing. This is a speaker test on the General Electric Model 3-5979C, transmitting from my other CB radio, which is a mobile unit. Like I said, I have nothing else to compare this to, but uh, it's it sounds good enough for me. The speaker quality seems good. The uh, microphone quality when you're transmitting seems good. Um, the speaker on this thing sounds just as good, if not better, than the speaker on my mobile radio. Other than that, I have nothing else to compare to. So if any of you guys uh, who have CB radios tell me, I mean, d does this actually sound like a decent radio in both receiving and transmitting? I'd just be curious to know. Now, really, the last question to answer with this thing is, uh, how far can it transmit? Well, I'm going to leave that for another video. I've already filmed the first part of it, but what I'm going to do is, I'm going to trek outside with this thing, have this camcorder set up with my other mobile radio, and have my GPS with me, and every uh, hundred or couple hundred meters that I move from the house, I'm going to do a transmit on all three power levels to my other radio and then you'll get to hear um, how this thing sounds the farther and farther you get away and it'll answer the question of how far you can transmit on a supposedly decent, because of the antenna, a supposedly decent handheld CB radio um, with a very cheap mobile CB radio with a very cheap mobile antenna. So uh, <laughs> that'll be quite interesting. I'm not going to expect any miracles. Uh, hopefully it will do half decently. And actually, I already said I've already done the test. I've already gone out a certain ways. Um, I, I had to finish early because it was getting dark. But uh, as far as I went, my other radio was still able to hear this thing. So um, the next day when the weather's good, I'll have to go out again and uh, go even farther and see how much farther I can go. And I won't reveal any details right now, but I can tell you that this thing does a whole heck of a lot better than handheld radios with rubber ducky antennas. Now, I mentioned how there were two revisions of this radio. This is the model 3-5979C, which is, I'm going to assume, the later revision and then the earlier revision is the 3-5979A. Well, both of these radios uh, look exactly the same and function the same, but there are a couple of differences between them. First of all, the C model 
has the external antenna jack, but the A model does not have an external antenna jack. Instead, it has an earphone jack in this place. So uh, if you would prefer an earphone jack over an antenna jack, you can get the A model. But there's a consequence because the A model also has only 3 watts of transmit power. This model, the C model, has the full 4 watts. Now, whether um, there really is a difference in transmit power or if General Electric simply changed the number of watts on the box, um, I don't know. But uh, at any rate, GE says that the A model has 3 watts of power and that the later C model like this one has 4 watts of power. So uh, that's a thing to uh, think about if you uh, get one of these radios. Would you rather have an earphone jack or would you rather have 4 watts of output power? Personally for me I would have much rather have had an earphone jack instead of an antenna jack but I wanted the 4 watts of power and so I was willing to uh, make the compromise. Well, that's really pretty much all there is to show of the General Electric Model 3-5979 handheld 40 channel CB radio. Um, I think it's a very nice unit. It, the build quality, I think, is definitely very great. As for the transmit range, that'll be determined in a later video when I do the range test between this and my other CB radio. Using this thing on an AC adapter or a cigarette lighter adapter will probably give you better receive and transmit performance than using it on the batteries, but of course that's the compromise you make for having total portability with batteries. And really, um, I just think it's a great radio. Now if you get a handheld CB radio, for God's sake, don't get one with a rubber ducky antenna like the GE3-5980 or the Midland 75-785 unless you plan on replacing the antenna in one of those units. And that poses another problem because the only aftermarket telescoping antenna you can get is an antenna made by Cobra called the HA-TA and apparently it's a piece of crap that falls apart as soon as you take it out of the box. So really um, you'd have to either find a different antenna um, at a local store because the Cobra antenna is the only antenna I can find online or get that antenna and hope it doesn't break three days later. But your safest bet if you get a one of these radios is just get one that has a built-in telescoping antenna. I know um, besides this model there were a couple of Radio Shack handheld radios uh, that have a telescoping antenna so uh, just if you want one of these, just go on eBay, type in handheld CB radio or whatever. Um, just look at photos and see whether or not it has a rubber duck antenna or not. Um, if you get this particular radio, see uh, whether it's got an antenna jack or an earphone jack. Remember, the model with the antenna jack has 4 watts of power, and the model with the earphone jack has 3 watts of power. So, uh, whatever you want, uh, just look at pictures. Um, if the pictures don't tell you what you need to know, just ask the seller. Ask what the model number on the bottom says, whether it says 5979A or C, and uh, you'll be good to go. Um, CB radio, definitely nowhere near as exciting as it used to be, but I think perhaps if maybe you and a friend, if you live close or work close or whatever, and you want to way to keep in contact with old cell phones or whatever, I think handheld CB radios are uh, definitely a good way to go. Apparently they have better range than GMRS radios, but apparently GMRS radios have better range indoors, whereas these have better range out of doors. But uh, there's a lot to uh, knowing about these things and uh, there's a lot of information online you can read about. So. There is the General Electric Model 3-5979 CB radio. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you guys next time.